So we want to introduce a specific bass that we will see uh, throughout this chapter, but also more importantly perhaps is that it's a bass that is seen very commonly in nature. So this number that we'll use the letter E to represent, E not being a variable, E saying a specific number. In fact, it's this value right here. This is approximately decimal here. Referred to as Euler's number, but also I'll refer to it as the natural base because I mentioned it uh, exists in nature uh, very uh, prevalently. It uh, is going to help model both growth and decay that can be seen in populations or in chemicals, uh, viruses, etc. Uh, a very, very common uh, base for a, a, a functions graph to, to follow. This part here, this is uh, almost called, called the calculus part. Uh, this idea of where E comes from, it would be the idea of what would this value right here, this 1 plus 1 over x all raised to the x, where would this number tend toward, as in what would this become if you just kept letting x get bigger and bigger and bigger? plugging in a bigger x here and a bigger x here and seeing what number you get from that, the limit, and it's a calculus term, the limit for that, where that ends up trending towards, like almost like asymptoting, is this number e that is actually another transcendental number like pi is. It's a decimal that goes on forever and does not repeat a pattern. Uh, and so again, we'll approximate it, think of it as like 2.72 roughly. But our calculator has an exact e uh, built into it for estimating purposes. And so to real quickly here, just to get used to your calculator, we're going to evaluate the function f of x equals e to the x for a couple of values of x. So for f of 3, we're saying x is 3, so we want e to the third. And again, on your calculator, whether it's a graphing calculator or not, if it's a scientific calculator, you should somewhere have a little e to the x. It may be the shift of your ln button, which is a button or as a Symbol we'll talk about on the next section, ln. So I'm just gonna hit the second button and ln, that's putting on my calculator, e to the, and then I'll type the three and hit enter. And I'll get a decimal that I'll approximate here to uh, five places. So e to the third is approximately 20.0855, and then a three would actually round to a four. Again, we don't actually really end up approximating often in this class, um, but in this case, we're just looking to get estimated values for these. Uh, now, for e or for f of one, e to the first, that is officially e, right? Anything to the first is just e. But again, if we use the value of our our known value for e, or even if you type into your calculator e to the first, you'll see that it's two point seven one eight. Two and that fourth, fifth digit will stay an eight. Now, what about zero? What about e to the zero? I don't need a calculator for that one because we know any non-zero number to the zeroth power is a one immediately. And then e to the one half, just to really quickly uh, remind you about this, what we know about a fractional exponent, because we will definitely see these later on. The one half power, remember, that is actually the same as the square root. The denominator of that power is like the root of, or the, uh, the root of the radical. So we'll see this again, certainly, just this idea of fractional, fractional exponents. But as far as calculating it, we'll go ahead and throw it in a calculator. I do want to point out that with your calculator, when we type this in, make sure you can see what I'm typing, I will do the e to the and then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I get the whole one half in parentheses so it knows that that whole fraction is the power of E and then that gives me my decimal. And so we'll approximate that to five places. 1.64872. All right, so one quick application of some exponents would be looking at interest being compound, compounded. Uh, there's two formulas here, one being a compounding that happens a certain number of times per year, so n compounds per year. The other one we call continuous compounding. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's more often than every second, right? It's, it's a, an infinite compounding of the, the value. Uh, and so notice, 
we actually end up using e for, for that value. And this right here is actually what relates to where e comes from. This 1 plus 1 over x to the x. There is some tie-in with how this formula turns into this formula as you look at having an infinite number of compounds, uh, compounding sessions per, per year. But as far as how to use the formulas, we're just plugging in numbers. So it says we decide to invest 8,000 for six years and we have two choices, two different accounts. One that pays 7% compounded monthly, one that pays 6.85% compounded continuously, and which one's better. So we're looking for the accumulated value, that's the A. And so if we're doing the compounded n times per year, so in this case, we're doing the compounded monthly. So we'll just label this the monthly one. Then we're putting in the $8,000 times one plus 1,000,000. All right, so our rate is that 7%. So as a decimal, it's 0 0.07 divided by the 12 months that's being offered over then n times t. And as again, the 12 months, t is the uh, number of years, which would be in this case, six years. Now at this point, we're just gonna enter all that into our calculator. I'll go ahead and show you the button and I'll show you what it looks like. So I want 8,000 times the quantity. I'm using my parenthesis there. One plus 0 0.07 divided by 12. And I'll close the parentheses and I'll raise that to the, and just to, Avoid any confusion here, I'll do 12 times six in parentheses so it knows that whole thing is the exponent. Showing you what I typed there, 8,000 times one plus the 0 0.07 divided by 12, and that whole quantity is being raised to the 12 times six. Now you could certainly just write 72 if you wanted to here. It's not that big a number, but I want to show you how the formula would look if we entered it, and I'll hit enter. And it looks like that particular account would end us up at $12,160. And we'll go ahead and round to the nearest cent. So 84 cents. That would be the balance for the monthly. But if we wanted to compound continuously, then that formula is just the principle of 8,000 with E raised to the r times t, r again being the rate of uh, 0 0.0685%, 0 t being the number of years, so six years. So entering that into our calculator here. 8,000 times, and then my e is right here, so I'll go shift and the ln button to get e in there. 0 0.0685 times six, and then close the parenthesis. So there's what it's looking like typed in. And looks like we're getting 12,066 dollars and 60 cents. So just by a little bit, we would say, the monthly compounding is better.